Aloha, I'm Kimo Hussey, and this is Manny Halliken, Aloha. my very, very good friend. Uh, in our duet, Manny represents uh, the builder part of it, and I represent uh, the player part of it. And one of the things we're going to do today uh, is to talk about variety of sounds. But before we, before we talk, uh, talk about that and get to that point, what I'd like to do is tell you just a little bit uh, about uh, these ukes. Manny, can you, can you start off by telling us about your long neck? Okay, this is a tenor body, 19-inch uh, scale. Uh, all myrtle, top, back, and sides from Oregon. The neck is uh, maple. Open gear tuners, rubners, mm. uh, and then it's equipped with uh, a Missy or oh, my my Sai pickup. What's the what's what's a, what's the derivation of this design here? Because there's no sound hole over here, so the sound hole is over here. It's the only sound hole, yeah. Oh, and, uh, what made you think of putting it there? Creativity. <laughs> Creativity. Whatever going on in there, that's what <laughs> good, happens. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I I took this to Oregon. This wood comes from Oregon. So I took this to a baritone retreat in Oregon. And uh, oh. well, one of the ladies there uh, coined the name The Hook. <laughs> this looks like a hook. Yeah, it looks like so, a fish hook. Yeah, it looks like yeah. a fish hook. So, uh, yeah. So that wood's from Oregon too? Uh, yeah, from Les Stencil. Oh, cool. Good guy. Cool. Uh, I want to mention one thing uh, about the about this. You add one thing. Um, <clears throat> several years ago, uh, I was at uh, Manny's house, and I was I was I was in the process of leaving, and so here's this uke that was just hanging on the wall collecting dust. So so I I I I said, Manny, what's this uke doing here? And I think he said, correct me if I'm wrong, he said the guy who who commissioned you to do it backed out of the deal, right? Yeah. So so the uke was just hanging. And so, you know, I, I pulled it down and I played it and 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 I love the sound of it. Uh, but I, I couldn't there was something special about that uke and I couldn't figure it out. So I bought the uke from Manny. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and continued to play it. And and finally figured out that what seemed strange about that uke, I love the sound, but the strings seemed like they were very, very unhappy and stressed. And, and they were. So eventually I asked Manny why, uh, and he said it was because the scale was longer than a normal tenor, yes? Yes. Uh, and the scale of that instrument was the eagle. The uh, eagle was 19 inches. 19, yeah. Just like this one. So, so what I thought was, okay, well, if the strings are too tight, and I was talking to another ukulele friend once, Jay Lichty, uh, and we were talking about, uh, is, is there such a thing as a tuning sweet spot uh, for an ukulele? So I thought, okay, well, if the strings feel tight, loosen them. So, so I down-tuned the ukulele from C6 to, to B flat 6, so the tuning... I down to the two was F, B flat, D, G. Uh, and, and, and when I did that, uh, the mm -hmm. ukulele was so appreciative and happy because it sounded wonderful. And, and so that gave me an idea to, to, ask, uh, to ask Manny and some other of my ukulele builder friends uh, to build 19-inch tenors. Uh, because I just love the sound, and then I took some regular tenors or 17 inch uh, scales and down to down to those to B flat. I love the sound, mm. um, and so I just wanted to mention that uh, about that ukulele. The other thing about a, uh, a 19 inch scale is that it provides the player just a little more horizontal spacing uh, on, on, uh, on the ukulele because if we hold these ukes up together. You can see the difference. Uh, you can see the difference in, in the scale. And, you know, the scale is measured from the nut uh, down to here. 
so you can see that that one's a little bit longer. Anyway, great uke, Manny. Um, good Thank for you. you. This uke, magnificent ukulele. Mm -hmm. It's a tenor, 17-inch tenor, and this is called a seven, an 1879 model. Uh, this ukulele was made by Charlie Fukuba of EEV Ukulele. Uh, and the reason for the 1879 model, or what he calls the 1879 model, is that this ukulele and its design is Charlie's design. But he did it in tribute, in tribute to the three guys who came in 1879 uh, to Honolulu from Madeira uh, and brought their, their Portuguese instruments with them that eventually turned into uh, <clears throat> the ukulele. And those three guys were Nunes, Santo, and Diaz. Is that correct? Yeah, okay. Um, the other thing that uh, Charlie did with his ukulele is on the uh, third, fifth, seventh, tenth, and twelfth fret, he used use Roman numerals. On the uh, 12, 13, 14, 15th fret, uh, he put 25 in Roman numerals. And the 25 indicates uh, his 25th year um, um, making ukuleles. And the, the sound is just incredible. Uh, so this is... Um, Let's see, the, the sides and, and uh, the back and sides are core. The top is core? Redwood. Redwood. Top is redwood. Um, and this, uh, uh, this, this kind of coat of arms looking kind of design is Charlie's uh, design. And he took this, this, uh, this center part here and, and made reproductions of it in the rosette that, that, that helps uh, define the rosette. And sound-wise, wonderful, wonderful, crystal clear sound. Okay, so we want to get back to something we mentioned in uh, a previous session, and that is we um, we're in the process of showing you all of these wonderful, wonderful, custom, high quality instruments, and one of the things we also want to do is is to tell you that that they all sound wonderful. There is no such thing as the ultimate ukulele uh, because we all have different preferences in sound. And just as we would not think of playing just one or two songs uh, for forever, uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of benefit that can come in periodically changing, changing ukuleles. Uh, it's all a matter of sound. So, one of the things we can also do uh, is uh, is take these ukuleles like Manny's uh, and Charlie's and play them in ensemble, you know, play them together. Because one of the things you can do uh, in your ukulele clubs or with your friends is is, is just play, uh, you know, with another friend. Um, so let's try and play something. Okay. What are we doing? Ulubalako. Shoot.
something different. Remember when we were talking about the uh, the 19 inch tenor and we said, hey, you know what we did was to make that ukulele happy er <laughs> happier uh, was to down tune it to B flat 6 tuning. Uh, in other words, you make this uh, sound um, F and then F to B flat B flat, then after that to G, I'm sorry, to D, F, F, B flat, D, and then after that is the G. So we have F. Do this again, come on. F. Again, we're talking about different sounds. Uh, so one of the things we did with the 19-inch ukulele to make it happier was to down tune it one full step. And by the way, what you can do with your own ukuleles, your tenor ukuleles, is to down tune it anyway and see if you like that sound. If you like it, stay with it. Okay, Manny, let's do the same song, different okay. tuning. Yeah. the total sound a little more bottom mm -hmm. um, and and I really like yeah. that. What do you think? Do you like this new sound? Different uh, sound? Yeah, and uh, the, the singing comes a little bit more easy. Yeah, it's because yeah, it's a little yeah. bit more. Variety is a spice of life. It applies <laughs> to ukulele as well. See you next time. Aloha. <laughs> <laughs>